you so much for joining me here. Um, I just want to get right into it. What was it about this film that made you want to collaborate with Mark Ruffalo? Uh, it's very hard to find reasons to not want to collaborate with Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> Let's just start right there. Right. But this story was astonishing and appalling and enraging. But ultimately, incredibly moving, you yeah. know? Because it's about the people who put themselves in the crosshairs of power and of the status quo. And who have the courage where they never knew this would be where they would end up to switch sides and take on the very systems of power that they represent, that they are paid to serve and protect. And that's really what happens with both Mark's character and Tim's character in this right. film. Now, speaking of like people standing up to the status quo, you're known for your activism. How did you personally connect with this story? Well, I connected with this story due to the diligence and hard work of Rob Bellot back when it happened. I read about it and got rid of these toxic products that were in my household and um, was shocked to see a few years later uh, in the store the same products being sold under a different name. So I already had an awareness and an outrage regarding this issue. And so when I got the script, I was all in. I, um, you know, the story itself, the, the director, who I've admired for many years, and Mark Ruffalo, who's a friend who I've worked with in the past uh, in the film, and, uh, you know, Anne Hathaway, uh, Bill Camp, Bill Pullman, all these great actors that were involved in it. So, yeah, I, it, was, it was one of those great moments where, you know, usually I torture myself about whether I should do something or not. And this one was like, no, come on, come on. This is, you know, I'm, I'm on the plane. Can you touch on the inspiration for the film and how were you able to condense a 20, a story that spans 20 years into two hours while Alan saying the story of the character, um, the different layers of the character, with the actual story and the plot. Yeah, the, the structuring of it dramatically and narratively was really the big challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was something that Mario Correa, who was the second writer who came on when I entered, because Matthew, the first writer, was off doing a movie of his own. Uh, we sort of almost started from fresh, because we wanted to meet everybody, and we wanted to be there and see, see it firsthand. But what you need in a film like this is to feel that there's the integrity of the actual complexity of the legal story underneath you. Mm -hmm. But there, you're not being called to report on it as an audience member, that there's something else driving it, and it's really the emotional narrative. And, but you feel that all of that is there. So you have to feel a cohesion and a sort of durability of the infrastructure of the story. But if you're not feeling it about the people, then it's just going to be a just you know it's going to be alienating, and so that was really the balance because you wanted to also remember what it was like for the family members and know what it was like for Wilbur Tennant in rural Parkersburg and know what it was like under the stress of this law firm that was putting everything and its reputation on this on the line right. to take on Dupont. What do you hope people will get um, by viewing this film? What do I feel that people will take away from this? I hope people will uh, come out of the film um, uh, enlightened to what is happening, uh, that, uh, that their very health is at risk, and I hope they're uh, motivated to do something about it. Well, thank you so much. Where's the bus? Where is the bus? You said we used to be a singer.